Hey there, Scipio here, and here's part two of the Tucano build series. So what I've got here is the motor mount kit that comes in the box with the Tucano for mounting an electric motor to uh, this airframe. So it uh, comes with this sort of motor mount block that's uh, got the blind nuts pre-installed for mounting your motor. And uh, this is the motor I'm using, if you recall from a previous video. Uh, and I think it'll work out nicely. And thankfully it's got bullets pre-installed, which is going to save me some time. I always like that. Uh, the ESC has the females pre-installed too, so uh, super dig that. Uh, lots of little uh, washers and hardware. So I'll tell you, this first attempt didn't work out so well for me. Uh, one of the things I like to do is tell you what I learned during the process of building. And in this case, I thought logically I'll put the motor mount on and then install the motor. Well, that didn't work out so well, and I'll show you why here in a second. So one of the things I ran into is the screws that come with the Tucano uh, mounting kit were a little bit too big for the mounting plate that came with the motor. So I just drilled those out and then mounted them to the uh, motor plate. And uh, I did use thread lock and also the lock washers on there. Put that on first, and then I'm going to install the motor next. And uh, the reason uh, that this is important is because um, I need to mount that motor from the backside, which I can't get to once I put the, uh, that assembly on. So again, thread lock on these screws. And... Uh, I'll show you again here why I have to do it in this order. All right, so there you go. Everything's all uh, installed. And then now we'll put this entire assembly onto the front of the airframe. You can see here though why I had to do the motor the way I did. Those screws, I wouldn't be able to get on uh, because the motor's in the way. So anyway, uh, so lock washer, washer, uh, sleeve. I am putting thread lock on these and uh, just getting these things installed onto the airframe. Uh, tip, you know, make sure that you get them all started before you tighten everything down. Uh, that'll be helpful. And then once you get it all tightened down, uh, it should be good to go. So in hindsight, uh, the one challenge was this one screw behind these wires. I might have pre-installed that, but I did get it through there. So, And then here's what it looks like where I'm going to route the ESC. Uh, I think that's the best place for it for now. Uh, the ESC is actually quite a challenge to mount because it's so huge. Next thing I'm going to work on is getting the control rods to the surfaces. Now, I started out to doing it this way, which is kind of feeling where those control rods are going to come out. Uh, and uh, just kind of poking the hole and then, you know, doing it all by, by feel. But I learned uh, a lesson on this, and I'll show you how I figured out how to do it another way. So I decided that pushing the rod through the inside, and then you can see where it kind of wants to poke out, and then just I use the X-Acto knife to, uh, to let that come free, which was really helpful. Here's a better close-up of where it's kind of like poking through, and then you just, you know, cut right there. Made it kind of easy. Now, I have got some great tips about using a soldering iron, a fine-tip soldering iron, to uh, cut holes and slots in this covering, and that's a great idea. I just didn't do that for this build. So once I get all my control rods through, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start working on mounting the control horn. So I need to put these clevises on, and for now I'm just getting them on there. Uh, for alignment purposes. I'll tighten these things down later. And uh, the manual recommends using the third hole on all the clevises, so that's where I'm starting out for everything. And what I want to do is get these as close to uh, the center line of that control surface as I can, that hinge line. One of the challenges I ran into on the rudder is because the uh, the airframe you know the uh, is so wide there I was running into problems with the control horn hitting now this isn't a 3d plane but I, and I'm not sure how much control movement I'm going to need but I wanted to get those holes lined up with the hinge line and I just didn't like the way it was hitting 
So uh, I actually took and cut out the bottom part of that uh, control horn so that I could have some clearance there. So, you know, those bottom two holes I wasn't using anyway. So this way I can mount it and I've got plenty of room to get some throws on that rudder. And then just like I did on the ailerons, um, just drilling some pilot holes with my little uh, hand drill and uh, getting these things screwed in. All right, and that's what it looks like installed. You can see there where that cutout became helpful for me and how the uh, uh, holes are lined up with that hinge line. So basically, I'm just doing the same thing with the elevator controls. Uh, almost exactly the same thing. The only difference is I don't have to uh, cut the control horn at all because there's no clearance issues with these. Now, the one challenge with these is because there are two different surfaces, uh, I need to make sure that they're as equal as possible so that whenever I connect them to the servo, I'm getting equal throws on both sides and I don't have any uh, any negative impact from uh, from that. So, And then uh, I've got this little, they call it a domino, uh, that I'm going to install to connect those two control surfaces to the one rod. I'll trim these rods up uh, in a minute, but for now I'm just going to bend them up so that I can keep working. So uh, the servos, I'm going to go ahead and install. I haven't done the electronics uh, setup yet, so uh, for now uh, I'm just getting them mounted and then I'll deal with getting them centered. And uh, we'll get that done in this video, so don't worry. So same thing uh, as I did before, uh, figure out where I want them. I'm aligning the control rods with the third hole on the servo arm and then uh, getting my pilots drilled, uh, getting my holes started, and then using thin CA to stiffen up that balsa right there. Let that dry. And while that's drying, I'll do some other work on other things. I'll get these uh, rods trimmed down. I may have left them a little bit longer than I needed, but this being my first uh, time to build this uh, plane, I would rather have them too long than too short. It's kind of hard to go backwards. So uh, the other thing I want to do is get my control surfaces perfectly flat. So I'm taping these uh, craft sticks to the surfaces to hold them flat while I do the setup here. Uh, both sides. I'm actually only doing the elevator because the rudder is pretty easy to eyeball when it's flat. But you can see here how I've got them perfectly uh, straight and uh, taped down so they won't move while I mess around with it. Once I get those uh, put on, I will uh, lock the two control rods in place so that they are now working as a unit together. All right, CA's dry, servo's going back in. And I am using the little rubber grommets. Uh, and uh, there we go, that lines up nice. Now I'll get the other servo mounted, exactly the same process. All right, now that that's on there, uh, same thing, except this time I've got two rods, one coming from the front to control the nose wheel, and then the other one coming from the back to control the rudder. I'm going to use the same third hole on the servo arms. One thing I did want to do real quick though is go in and trim off my uh, screw ends on the control horns. Uh, I kind of wanted to wait till I got to a point where uh, I was ready to do that, so while that CA glue is drying, uh, I will just take care of that. Alright, so uh, now I'm going to go ahead and tighten down these clevises, uh, get them locked into place, and get my fuel tubing on to keep them closed. That's kind of a, a safety feature, which is kind of cool they, that the kit comes with the fuel tubing. I didn't have to go run any down. If you're uh, building almost exclusively electrics, fuel tubing isn't something you normally have on tan, so it's kind of nice that it comes with it. So get that tightened down. And here's a little trick I found to uh, getting the fuel tubing on, which is uh, either needle nose pliers or these little forceps. Just uh, slip them over the nose and then stretch it out. 
and then that can slip over the clevis. And that will save you a lot of grief if you didn't put them on ahead of time, uh, which is what I didn't do. Back to the third hole, which is actually the middle hole. So I was kind of wondering if it was third from the bottom or third from the top. Doesn't matter, third is third on either side. All right, so I have my Castle Creations uh, BEC, my receiver, uh, all that stuff's all hooked up and uh, got my uh, receiver bound to my radio. And so now I can work on centering these servos. And uh, with them in the center position, I'm just trying to find the arm location that is most closely at 90, so I don't have to use very much sub-trim. Uh, and then I'll sub-trim out whatever difference there is. Once I figure out uh, which arms I'm going to use, then uh, I'll mark them with a Sharpie. That way when I pull them off, uh, I don't lose track of which ones are which. I'm marking the holes too. So, And uh, then I'm going to ream out the holes with my uh, hobby knife here. Just a little bit at a time to get these uh, mounts on these, uh, whatever these things are called. Anyway, they're very helpful. <laughs> uh, all right, so I uh, got those on and loosen up these uh, top uh, grub screws so that I can slip the control rods through. All right, there we go. Don't forget that center screw on the servo arms. Uh, if you've been building for any length of time, you will have forgot that screw at least once in your life. So um, don't forget it now. And there we go. Got those all connected. Uh, and everything's looking good. Just tighten that nose wheel down. You, you know, you got to get the nose uh, to where it's perfectly straight. It is a little bit of a tough push on that nose wheel, so I might work on that a little bit later. Now I'm working on the other servo. Uh, same thing. Figure out which arm. Uh, works best and uh, get the hole reamed out. Except in this time, we're just gonna use the, uh, the straight control rod with a 90 degree bend up through the arm. There's this little plastic clip that comes in the kit that will allow us to uh, fix that to the rod. Just like that. I've seen people put it down, I've seen people put it up. I don't know that it really matters, but mine just happened to be up here. And then slip that through the domino, install your screw. Now, now that I got everything kind of figured out, um, I am going to trim off all these extra arms just to get them out of the way. Did that on both servos. And that's uh, looking good there. So should be getting very equal throws on my elevators. And then uh, make sure I thread lock all these grub screws once I have everything where I want it. Again, you have to eyeball or, uh, you know, make sure that your nose wheel is straight and that your rudder's straight on that one servo. And then this is what that looks like when those other two arms that aren't being used are cut off. Alrighty, there we go. And you can see now my control surfaces are functioning on the tail. And I'll deal with my uh, rates later. All right, and here's a look at how I think my electronics are going to go in. Again, the ESC is going to go right there next to the battery. Uh, and uh, the BEC that's providing power to my receiver is, there's a little shelf right there that I just have it set in. I think that'll be fine. I'm hoping there's enough airflow for the ESC there. I think it will be fine. It doesn't actually rub up against the battery at all. There's plenty of clearance uh, for that. Um, but it is huge. There's, there's no way I could fit it anywhere in the nose of the plane without uh, cutting into the cowl, which I've seen people do, and it looks okay. I'm just trying to avoid that. One other thing I wanted to do is try and loosen up that nose wheel just a bit. So I took a drill just to kind of loosen things up, and we'll see if that kind of helps uh, free things. But anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, probably one more for the build, and then we'll be wrapped up with this thing. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.